Cecilia Fountain here, training pastors on how to approve an event. First, your ministry leaders will be selecting you as your approving, as their approving pastor. How to know who is in your ministry leader group. If you click groups and come over here to my group leaders, you will see all the group leaders that are sort of, I guess, reporting to you. You're in this list is you can click, click view all and you can get a list of all your leaders and send an email to all your leaders in one time. So that's one way to contact all your group leaders at one time. I say this as far as the to the event training because event approval because these people are going to be requesting you as their approving pastor. And let me show you just very quickly how an event is created. Before I do that, let me show you the flow chart on what's supposed to happen before an event is created. An event organizer, a ministry leader, will talk to you as their approving pastor about the event, what rooms they're going to want, what types of resources they're going to want, and you will have an idea of what's going to be happening. Then they will go into CCB and create the event, and then some notifications get sent out. They get sent out to the pastors, they get sent out to the rooms and resources approving pe people, and it'll also get sent to Courtney. Now, it gets the notification gets sent to all of these people at the same time. The training is that nobody in the rooms and resources or the event approval groups will approve anything until the pastor's conceptual okay is approved. So as an approval pastor, you are a bottleneck in this process, but I'll show you how quickly and easily you can approve things in CCB. And hopefully it will be a quick and easy process because you've already talked to your event organizer and nothing should be a surprise by the time you see it in CCB. So let me pop back over and show you how an event is created. You click on the calendar, you click, let me start over again. Click on the calendar icon, select the date that your event is going to be held. I'm going to choose a date that might not be as busy. Select rooms and resources needed. Name your event, give it some description, make sure the event is hosted by a group. There's a whole other training for this. Add the rest of the criteria, click OK, add your rooms and resources. So I'm going to do the conference room. I know that I need my pastors OK. This is just some like contractual disclaimers that we're having the ministry leaders uh, agree to. They're going to select, today I'm pretending to be Kyle, they're going to be, select pile, Kyle's pastoral or conceptual okay. This is just the conceptual okay. The event still might need some uh, adjusting, but this is to tell the staff that it's okay to proceed in exploring the different things that the person's requested. So say the person wants the event in the bulletin and they're going to add some wording. Sorry, they need to add a one. Uh, they want it in the bulletin, they want it on the website, uh, they don't need a table after service, they want it on the mobile app, and they want it in social media. And say this event is like a camp and it requires a registration form and they want to collect money and they want payment options and there's a cutoff date and this is some other information that they want to add to the form. And this is stuff you've already talked to them about. So this is how they're communicating with the rest of the staff their, their needs and, and desires. When all of is said and done, they click OK. Like I said, this is just a test. It's kind of all bogus information. What happened after they clicked OK is that I'm pretending to be Kyle. This red dot shows up on the bell. What that is indicating is there's an event-related approval pending, and this is your notification dot. If you don't see the dot because you're not logged into CCB, you will get this email or an email that looks like this the next morning. It'll be say rooms and re resources requests. It'll explain briefly what the name of the event is. This is one from another event and it'll say pastor in this case probably Kyle's conceptual okay and you can manage the request. When you click this green button it'll take you to this screen. Not this screen, this screen. It'll take you to this screen showing you that the event is in there. You can see all of the things that they've requested and over on the right on view details you can review all of their answers. Please review their answers. Make sure it reflects what you guys have already discussed. You click the button when everything's good and you click approve. When that happens it pops off your screen, the red dot goes away, and you're done. 
the rest of the staff will now move forward in looking at the events and such. A couple things to note. Please do not click decline. What happens if you click decline is the entire event is deleted and your ministry leader needs to start over. If you do notice that th things aren't quite the way you thought they would be, then please contact your ministry leader and ask them to make adjustments, okay? And then they can make the adjustments and let you know, and then you can go ahead and click your approval button, okay? The other thing I want you to know is that you can go back and find the status of an event by clicking on the event in the calendar, managing the event, and then if you go up on the report icon, you can do an event setup report, and there you can get the information from the event and all of the answers to the questions for the resources.